at the WrestleMania 39 press conference after Roman Reigns retained his undisputed WWE Universal Championship by defeating challenger Cody Rhodes, Paul Heyman famously said that when it comes to the Bloodline story, we were only in the third inning. At the time, I thought, come on, Paul. Okay, great way to plug your group, and maybe that was wishful thinking. But really, we all know the Bloodline story, as great as it was, is almost over. Now, though, after this past weekend, I think the wise man was right. Welcome to Silo Voice Wrestling on YouTube, the Silo Voice Wrestling podcast from Silo Voice Studios in Montreal. I'm Jason C. McLean. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and of course, ring that bell for notifications for my wrestling hot takes, cold takes, simmering takes, predictions, the occasional review, and opinion pieces like this one. When it comes to baseball, I'm not really an expert. I haven't been since the Expos folded decades ago, but I am aware of the basics. I think, though, uh, we should maybe stretch the analogy for this one from innings in a baseball game to chapters in a book or actually scenes in a play. Because I do know that a baseball game, unless it goes into overtime, has nine innings that easily divides into three. And there's three acts in a play, each with three scenes in it. So we're going to use that. Now, I started to realize that Paul might be right after I watched Backlash 2024 from Lyon, France. Okay, I'm not going to do a Backlash review, but if I did, my summary would be, wow, that crowd was excellent. It turned an already solid show into an excellent show. And that first match in particular was a real banger. And kind of out of nowhere, Nick Aldis came down and turned it into a street fight. Tamatonga and Solo Sokoa of the Bloodline versus Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. And while I did there expect there to be a surprise appearance of a new Bloodline member, I thought that was going to be Jacob Fatu, as did a lot of people. I didn't think it would be Tangaloa. That came out of nowhere. But that also got me thinking that, wow, this Bloodline story is really getting interesting and it's thwarting a lot of our fantasy booking, although kind of almost completing the fantasy booking, but then swerving at the end. And I thought, wow, there's a lot more to this story. So let's look at this uh, third inning comment. Let's, let's, let's go to the innings or the chapters or the scenes. Okay, so the first scene is, of course, the formation of the Bloodline. This started in late 2020 with a series of matches between Roman Reigns and his cousin, Jey Uso. Jimmy Uso getting involved. It was properly formed uh, in July 2021. Now, admittedly, this was in the no fans era, and I was not currently a fan. I had stopped watching wrestling pretty much in the Attitude Era. I was sort of getting back into it, some classic stuff. I wasn't fully back into it at this point, but I have gone back and done some research to figure out what happened. This era was when the bloodline was established. Roman Reigns declared himself tribal chief. He got uh, Jimmy and Jey Uso to acknowledge him. He got the acknowledgement of the Anoa'i tribe elders, and he was a world champion. The second part, or the second chapter, or the second inning, or the second scene was when they were all champions. This is leading up to, during, and after WrestleMania 38, Roman Reigns was the universal champion. He also became a double champion by uh, winning the WWE championship. The Usos were tag champions. Uh, they had one set of the tag titles. This was also a, a, a part in time where I wasn't really paying attention, at least to this story. I did watch the first night of WrestleMania because Stone Cold was coming back. I saw some of the second night. I was, a, I was getting back into wrestling, but I wasn't fully back in. But of course, yeah, this era was dominated by the bloodline dominating and all being champions um, and solidifying their their dominance on the WWE. Now, the third chapter is when I entered, or the third inning, as did Solo Sokoa and Sami Zayn. Now, this is when I started really getting interested in wrestling again and following regularly. There was, of course, some great comedy segments involving Sami Zayn, where he almost cracked up the entire bloodline. He went from being Honor, well, not honorary ooze to honorary ooze to trying to be a full ooze. They proved his loyalty at War Games, Survivor Series. There was the trial of Sami Zayn. Uh, Solo Sokoa also came into the group at this point, too. The Clash of the Castle, sort of random call up from NXT without anyone knowing. Uh, it was the hottest story in wrestling uh, in ages. And I was loving it. I'm a Montrealer, so I love my fellow Montrealer was in this story as well, too. I thought it was great. There was the, the massive crowd reaction when Sammy finally stood up for himself, hit Roman in the back of the, 
by the, with the chair at Royal Rumble. There was the excellent match, probably my favorite match of 2023 at Elimination Chamber in Montreal. I'm a little bit biased. So was chapter three, was inning three the Sami Zayn story? No, at least not according to Paul Heyman. That was just the beginning of the third inning. Uh, he made that announcement after Sami and Kevin Owens beat the Usos for the tag titles and Cody Rhodes lost to Roman Reigns. So that's the marker we have. That's still just the third inning. The third inning, of course, continued. Um, the next uh, chapter involved well, the Usos sort of being on the outs and eventually Jay and Jimmy Uso left. Now, while in a tag match, Jay was the first person to pin Roman in years, he would eventually lose at SummerSlam because his brother Jimmy would betray him and go back with the, the bloodline. He'd end up back, uh, he'd end up on Raw. Uh, Jimmy would stay with the bloodline on SmackDown. There'd be that separation. Sammy's also on Raw. Now, I'd say that this could have been the end of the third inning, but Paul Heyman around this point said that they were only in the bottom of the third. So the next few months, uh, the story kind of simmered and focused a bit more on Solo Sokoa, Jay on Raw. Roman was out for a lot. He'd come back. Um, and I guess at Royal Rumble, he'd eventually have that uh, fatal four-way match. And then enter The Rock. Okay, we've got to be in the fourth inning now, you must be thinking. This must be the start of the fourth inning. No, no. Because that would mean the third ending ended with Roman defending the title against LA Knight in Saudi Arabia and winning a fatal four-way at Royal Rumble and Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble, presumably to challenge him, but then here's The Rock. No, that, that's not really a good way to end a chapter. It's definitely not a good way to end an act. So this is still the third inning. Of course, the plan for The Rock was probably a little bit different. They were going to have him fight Roman. Maybe he was even going to win. Who knows? Plans changed, but we're going to go with how things developed. We're going to assume, even though it's probably not the case, that this was the plan all along. So for storytelling purposes, we're still in the third inning. Uh, the Rock comes back, overshadows Roman, uh, ends up actually pinning Cody, and then Cody eventually finishes his story at WrestleMania by pinning Roman. But that's not the end of the Bloodline story, far from it. That is just the end of the third inning of the third chapter, of the third scene. More importantly, the first act of the Bloodline Saga ends with Roman Reigns losing the undisputed WWE Universal Championship at WrestleMania. That's good storytelling. And not just good wrestling storytelling, good overall storytelling, theatrical storytelling, classic three-act drama. Uh, you end the first act at a very dramatic point and a point of change. And that's exactly what they did. And then you start the second act, you start the fourth chapter or the fourth scene or the fourth inning, if we want to go back to baseball, with uh, the main character out. And we're focusing on new characters. We're starting to tell a different story within the main story. It's the rise of Solo Sokoa. That's what well, he's now, he hasn't called himself tribal chief, but you kind of think that's where they're going. He got rid of Jimmy Uso, brought in Tama Tonga. Paul Heyman is not even talking to Roman. He pulled him out of the draft. He revealed later he was the one who pulled him out of the draft. Um, and what do we get? We get the fans chanting, we want Roman. We want Roman. It wasn't just a fluke yet. It happened on SmackDown. It happened in France. Um, it happened basically, Triple H in about a month has been able to do uh, what the previous administration couldn't do in five years, get Roman Reigns over as a massive babyface. But I'm pretty sure when Roman returns, he will be a babyface. But of course, this brings us back to where we are now, to Backlash. While the original fantasy booking may have been changed, there's all this new fantasy booking happening around the bloodline. I, I personally think that uh, Jacob Fatu is going to show up, but he's going to be on Roman's side with... Uh, Jimmy Uso, maybe they'll reunite with Jay Uso. The Rock will be uncovered as the leader on the other side. Uh, they might even bring Sami Zayn back into the mix, maybe for war games or something like that. But 
we just started the second act. We just started inning four, chapter four. So I think this chapter might end eventually with Roman fighting the rock. I think they got rock against Cody, for example, uh, midway through with Roman against solo, something like that. I think we have like at least another year, maybe another two years for the second act. It's brilliant. It's if they play this right, if they continue to play it the way they've been playing it. This could be like a decade long story, a three act play. Uh, I don't think they've ever really done a decade long story in wrestling. I mean, they've had people go away and come back and all this, but I, I think Roman's going to be back. I think he's going to be a baby face, maybe in the second chapter, in the second uh, act, maybe in the third act. Who knows what's going to happen in the third act? One thing I could say is that a while ago, last year, I was like, wow, the bloodline was such a great story, but I was kind of losing interest. Well, that was just almost near the end of the, it was at the bottom of the third. And the, at the very end of the third, they brought the interest back. And now the fourth, it's a whole new interest, a whole new story. I'm hats off. I'm honestly amazed. And I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes next. And also my apologies to the wise man for doubting what you said. Even in character, there's always a little bit of truth in what Paul Heyman says. So what do you think? Do you agree with me that this is really the beginning of the uh, fourth inning or the second act or the fourth chapter or fourth? The, you, you heard what I said. Okay. Do you agree with me? Where do you think the bloodline's going? Do you have any fantasy predictions for where the bloodline's going now? Let me know in the comments. Follow at Silo Wrestling on X at SVS Reviews on Instagram and Facebook and me at Jason C. McLean on X and Instagram. And of course, I'll catch you next time for Silo Boy Studios in Montreal. I'm Jason C. McLean.